Hi, today I'm going to have a quick look at my 1000 watt electric motor and how you put it in and out of your bike frame. The kit I've got, the wire comes out the other side. It's got these little rubber covers which you put on. Keeps the, uh, the nut nice and dry. These are quite a large nut and you can see the axle is uh, flattened out either side. Let me just take this off and you can have a look close up. So this is how it fits in and basically the axle is too big for the dropout so therefore the two flat sides allow it to slide up into the dropout so it does slip, sit a tiny bit lower than a standard one. If you want to look at the other side I don't know if you can see that. This one is where the wire comes out, it has a cover on it. And uh, yeah, if you see it from there, you can see it sticks out of the dropout slightly when it's all bolted together. Now, to take the wheel off, I've learned from experience it is really tricky to get it in and out easily. So, I've unbolted the disc caliper. So I don't bend the disc getting it in and out because it's very easy to bend the disc when putting it in and out. So I just unbolt with that and now I'm going to unbolt the whole wheel and just put this back in here. And another tip is I've, because it's so heavy, I've suspended the bike. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, I've suspended it so it's just hanging just off the ground off my uh, workshop mount. So right, let's go and uh, undo this. Oh, See obviously I do it up very tight because uh, I don't want any chance of it coming loose. Out. So you can see how it just slides out and you can see the impression of the uh, where the washer is to show that it sits a little bit below where it's supposed to go in. Now it's time to change the tyre. Hi there, uh, back again. Now, real reason I took the, the uh, wheel out was to change the uh, tyre to the new uh, Marathon Plus because uh, the old one had worn out. I've now put on the uh, Marathon Plus 26 by 2 inches, and really, this is the right pain to get the wheel in and out, so you want a tyre that doesn't get punctures and uh, I've used that one for a couple of years and now it's uh, as you can see it's a bit uh, bald on tread and there's one little bit where you can just about see the uh, blue inner stuff that it's uh, worn through to so I have to put a new one on but now we have to get it back into these dropouts this is the advantage of having it hung up the bike. So I'm just going to lower it down a little bit. 
and try and line it up. Oh, there we go. One side in, this side in, and the other side in. Just need to lower it a bit more. There we go. I think we're, uh, I think we're in now. Give you a little close up of that, just to see. So you can see here. gloves off sorry you can see here what I mean about the axle sticking out slightly see it square on see it does stick out a little bit because it is uh, bigger than the original axle but that's not really a massive issue the nuts and bolts are pretty uh, beefy so they're plenty uh, strong enough now we we'll just have to get it all lined up and take it in and it comes with these different washers with a little hook thing on it so uh, Put that on the bottom because it won't fit the top. And the uh, large nut. And exactly the same with the other side. Except you've got the wire. Put a little bit of weight on it to make sure it's in the middle. sure it's super tight because uh, there's a lot of power going through here so you don't want it to fall off there you go now I just need to put the chain back on and stick the caliper back on let me do up my mud guard. There we go. And then we'll be back together. And a few people asked me about having a. Uh, a few people have asked me about having a torque arm going from here to the frame. And the reason I've not done one is because this is a uh, quite an over-engineered frame. It was the first giant chance they ever brought out and um, it was the frame itself for a cross country bike is uh, three and a half kilos which is uh, pretty heavy and uh, so therefore I know it's pretty over engineered because later ones are over half a kilo lighter and uh, yeah it's pretty beefy so uh, I've not had any uh, issues with this so yeah that's how that fits in and then the other side just bolts that back in as it was before and there you go and then simple as that when it comes to fitting the electric wheel in your bike the only fiddly things you'll have is because the axle sits lower 
because the axle sits lower, you'll notice the uh, disc brake doesn't line up properly. The caliper is normally a bit high, sticking out. I like to put various different adapters on it. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Various different adapters on it to uh, bring the caliper down slightly so that the whole disc is in contact. Um, but that's the only real major issue you get is lining up a disc brake because obviously the axle's wider so the wheel is a tiny bit lower in the frame than it would otherwise be. And if you want to put the normal derailleur on it then um, I'm sure that'll work out pretty much fine. I've just put this uh, single speed uh, chain tension on it just so I can just run it as a single speed in the top gear because you don't really need the smaller gears. Alright, thanks for watching, hope you found that useful, see you next time.